Today here at Iron Oak Metalcraft, we are going to show you how to make coils, which are then in turn used to make the rings for chainmail. With most coil making, you're going to start off with a bunch of wire. Uh, typically it comes in a bundle like this, which you can order offline, or you can go ahead and, and usually get it in a spool at a hardware store or somewhere else. Um, usually the specialty wire that you order online is going to look a lot like this. It's going to come into a loosely coiled bundle like this. Um, the first thing that you want to do is that you want to go ahead and you want to funnel out your wire out of this bundle so that way you have enough material to work with when you're making your coils. Now most people don't take the time to make their own coils they just go out and usually buy them usually from places like the ringlord.com or other um, craft stores that they may have in their area so once you have the material uncoiled and you have a sufficient amount you want to go ahead and you want to put on some kind of protective glove in this case i'm using a standard leather glove usually on my right hand because that's the hand that i use to work with the most so, um, as you can see, I have a lot of material here on the top of my glove. That's because when I hold the coil like this, uh, the, I mean the wire, um, and I'm making the coil, it pulls through and it bunches up against that mandrel, which is the device, um, the piece of metal you're going to use in order to wrap the coil. Uh, mandrels can come in different shapes, sizes, um, whatever it is that you're depending on making. Most traditionally, um, it's a round mandrel used making for uh, round rings. Now, there are occasionally hexagonal or octagonal mandrels. And those are used for, obviously, uh, octagonal or hexagonal shaped rings, which is rare in most uh, chainmail crafting. Um, another tool that you're going to end up using a lot are right angled aviation snips. You can find these at most of your hardware stores. They cost anywhere between $15 and $30, depending on where you go. The advantage to using the uh, aviation snips over using, say, like a pair of wire cutters is that this is going to give you a much more flush cut, and it's going to be a lot cleaner looking when you make your rings. Now, <clears throat> on to the coil making. Now typically most mandrels will have some type of hole in them to where you can go ahead and feed the wire through that hole and it'll catch and then you can start making your coils. In this case, I don't have a uh, hole in my mandrel in order to hold the wire. So what you can do is you can go ahead and just feed your wire in through, uh, right in through the mandrel. Get a little better angle here. So you feed your wire into the mandrel, which is right here. What you do is that you want to go ahead and bend that so you get a nice little 90 degree angle almost on that little piece. So once you have that, you want to go ahead and firmly grip the wire in your glove and making sure that it's tight against that mandrel and that little holding piece on the drill. Now, depending on which way your drill is going, uh, typically, I go uh, clockwise. You just start off slowly. And as you can see, the wire gets pulled through and it starts making that coil. Now, this is pulling tightly against my glove, which is what you want. You want a nice, tight coil. So you want to go nice and slow. You don't want to go too fast, because if you go too fast, you run the risk of the wire bunching up over the coil and destroying the coil. Now once you're done with the coil and you get it right near the end, you're going to keep holding on to that piece. I mean, you can let it go, but if you do, see that happens. It starts uncoiling itself. So you want to hold on tightly to it. Take your snips. Take your snips and just clip it. And what that's going to do when you pull that coil off the mandrel is it's going to give you a nice little platform to work with. 
Um, it's going to be real easy for you to snip off links one at a time, starting at one end of the coil and working your way back. Um, I will show you that step in just a few moments. So once you have your coil, you can just go ahead and take your snips to it. You can just slowly start clipping off links. Now, I know it's kind of hard to see here, but I have the just the tip of the... Um, snips right inside the coil there I only have the first couple um, rungs selected the reason why you do that is because if you don't you run the risk of actually bending out your links and then you have to spend the time of rebending them back in the shape so you just go ahead and you just snip down and you get two little links there that you can work with um, these are pretty small but that's pretty much all it is to um, chainmail link making. You just go through the process of repeating that clip and snip, clip and snip, um, just going through the coil, just cutting off links, usually two at a time. Um, it really depends upon the gauge of the wire too. Um, this stuff that I'm working with currently is stainless steel uh, 20 gauge I believe. Uh, so, I mean, it's relatively small and thin, relatively easy to work with. Um, now, once you get into the bigger gauge stuff, usually like the um, anything above like 12 gauge, you're going to start running into a lot more problems uh, snipping that wire because it's a lot thicker and a lot more material to go through. Usually in that case, if you're using the right angled snips, you want to go one link at a time. Um, it's going to be really hard, especially on that thicker material on these snips. So after a while, while you're going to want to go through and you're going to want to actually um, take a file to these edges right here and just kind of take out the little burrs that are forming um, from snipping the coils. And so you just keep going through and until the uh, coil's finished. And that's pretty much all it is to making chainmail links.